Hi, I'm Erin Marcus, former corporate executive turned entrepreneur and founder and CEO of Conquer Your Business. Welcome to the Ready Yet podcast. We're excited to bring you more than 100 episodes of interviews and insights designed to help entrepreneurs get the financial and emotional freedom they need in order to build a business and a life they're proud of. Welcome to this episode of the Ready Up Podcast, where I finally had a hit record because I can talk to today's guest forever. One, because I love talking to her, but two, because it's exactly what I'm looking for in my business right now. So I can't wait to like tweak a little more improvements and ideas out of you during this conversation, but share this with an audience as well. So Laura Bull is my guest today. Why don't you tell everybody a little bit about who you are and what you do before we dive into everything? So I like to say that I turn people into brand names. That's basically what I've done my entire career. I was, I spearheaded all of the marketing and artist development at Sony Records for a decade. Then I went out on my own. Then I wrote my bestseller from individual to empire. And that's more geared to helping people figure out their authentic and powerful personal brand, how to turn it into a business brand. And so that's basically what I do. Love it. Love it. Love it. And what we were talking about that I was so interested in, I really think this is hard, right? This is where I also see a lot of people get caught up. So I can't wait for your insights on this. Is this idea that we know as entrepreneurs, we need to be visible, right? If nobody knows we exist, then it's a little hard to get clients. And in today's marketplace, which is noisier and noisier than ever, it's more important than ever to get out there. People, if I were to meet you in real life, I'd have a nice cup of coffee with you. And then I'd go on LinkedIn and make sure you were who you said you were. It's weird, but that is like how that works nowadays. So you got to be out there, but people don't even know where to begin because we have all these crazy ass segments to our life. We have all these labels that we have. We don't know how they go together. We don't know how we need to show up in a certain way. So people will buy something from us. Yes. All of the above. And that's yeah. the playground. That's the sandbox you play in. Sandbox bad, choice, I play bad choice. In. I don't know. <laughs> no, that is the sandbox I play in. No. And we tried, and that is exactly one of the biggest red flags that I see when I'm talking to somebody, usually either entrepreneurs, creative entrepreneurs, CEOs, people who are trying to become the face of the product they sell or the face of the business. If you're selling yourself like a realtor or somebody like that, that is, you are the product that you're selling. And so that's one of the biggest red flags I see is that how do you take everything about you, your personality, your lifetime of experiences, your values, your priorities, how do you turn that into a Nike swoosh, right? How How, how do you turn that into a physical representation of everything you are? Right. That's insane. So that is basically what we do. And we take our clients through a big process. So it takes three to five months to get from start to finish in a brand development project. But we start obviously with the audit phase. We don't start with logos. You don't start branding with logos. A brand is not a logo, right? It's the connection that you have with your target audience. And when you're talking about personal branding, that is much different than traditional branding. So I always say, if you're the boardroom in a Jeep, when you're trying to market a Jeep and you've got the boardroom of people trying to do that, they're going to sit there and put a personality onto that Jeep in order to sell it to the audience they want to sell to, right? So outdoorsy, rugged, fun, right? These are the elements that they're going to pull together. But a person already has all of these things that make them unique and whatever that looks like, right? So we go through a very big questionnaire audit phase and we literally ask everybody, (laughs) For like their entire lifetime of experiences, we want to know your childhood memories. We want to know everything. But we also want to know what you want to do for the next 10 years, because marketing is really what you want to say for the next 20 days. Branding is what you want to say for the next 20 years. So you got to get it right. It's the foundation. Stop there for a second, because I think that's really important. One of the things, for example, that I run into is people who are so scared to pick a niche so scared to pick a lane and I'll use the phase fine. If you want to, if you're going to have a meltdown, let's just call it niche for now, just to get you into action, right? You can change your mind. But I think what you said is so true. Marketing is a very, you can have a long-term marketing plan, but truthfully it's going to change constantly. You're doing so many different things marketing wise. 
And that's the thing, like the difference, one example on a branding side, I'm looking at a, a larger target audience. On a marketing side, you can section off that audience and have this marketing campaign hit this audience, have this marketing campaign hit this audience. You have the same tone and the same voice and the same identity, the brand identity is the same, but you can say different things. Right. Your content, but, and for me, what I always think of is I, even if I look in the last five years of my business, what I talk about has grown with me. What I talk about has changed as the market has changed. We had a pandemic in the middle of it, like, of but my brand and how I want people to feel at the end of the day has never changed. And that's one of the, we look at purpose is one of the things that we have to have before we even figure out the target audience. Because if you don't have a brand purpose and you try to hit a target audience, if I can speak correctly, then you will not be able to figure out a shared value that you have with that target audience. And a shared value, and not enough people talk about this, but a shared value is the only thing that is going to get you brand advocates and brand loyalty. That is the only thing that is going to spur um, word of mouth, which is the end all and be all, right? So I think that's something that really has, to, it could not be said enough. There's a difference between passion. There's a difference between purpose. If you can define your brand purpose and therefore the target audience, then you can figure out what that shared value is between that. And it's, it's how do you know if you're a Jeep person or a Lexus person? Okay, so it's funny that you say that because in my questionnaire, <laughs> I was actually able to pinpoint what one of my clients drove. That is how much I find out about my clients. And now it's actually a question on my questionnaire. <laughs> like, what are you doing? Because everything is going to tell me about you, right? Every little thing, what you like, where do you like to shop? Because are you REI person or are you a Bloomingdale's? These are different people. And one of the things that I say is, how are your people supposed to know they're your people if you don't know that they're your people? Exactly. And again, that that shared value has to be underlying every single communication standpoint that you have. Social media, yes, but social media is just one communication channel to get to an audience. I always say George Clooney doesn't even have social media, but he's out there literally changing the world and one is, and is one of the most successful influencers out there, right? There are other channels to get your message out to a specific target audience, but everything always has to have that shared value just buried in so that you know that you're actually going to connect with that audience or the right audience. The right audience will see it and they will connect. I should say it that way. And so where do people start? Your values are... I, we, I did this with my boyfriend, the value, the leader, because he, he's in leadership at his business and, and his company. So they had to do this. So him and I do this, the the shared values, the cards, right? Yeah. yeah. Cards, right. Yeah. So where does somebody begin if they feel like I feel, which is basically schizophrenic? Okay. So obviously my book walks you through the process. <laughs> what I take my clients through is a three phase process. I do the audit phase first, and then we do the brand strategy which comes from, so the introspection, all of that comes in the first phase. And I will say that I don't like to look outside of the competition too much. We just glance enough to be able to know that we're different than them, but we do not want to get too buried into what the competition is doing. Cause that not only will mess with your mind, especially as a creative entrepreneur, but it will also derail you because you don't know what's going on in their business. you right. So that's the whole thing. I'll get off that soapbox, but, um, <laughs> It's important though. It, it is, is important. important. So uh, I see that a lot. I see that problem a lot. But anyways, so then the brand strategy phase is where we come up with the brand positioning, the brand statement, the brand pillars, all the brand identity, things like that. And then we make the recommendations for the brand that needs to happen in the image, the narrative, and the product and the service. Those are the three major areas of the brand. And those all have to be saying the same thing. So then the third phase is implementation. And what I will also add is that does not mean you're ready to go out and market, okay? You have to do the implementation of the brand first before you start spending a dime in the marketing, okay? That's the first thing. But I do have a checklist on my website. It's just like a okay. brand checklist for people. It's a free download. It's at thebrandmgmt.com, so thebrandmanagement.com. And it's just on the main page. So you and anybody can download that. And it's a simple checklist that'll say, okay, have you done this? Have you done this? And it's more or less what I take my clients through. And we'll and make sure, by the way, we're going to put the links in there. So you are like one click away. So if you didn't, okay, correct, great. 
I yeah, think in GMP. Oh, sorry. But also my book. So the book is separated into three phases too. The first phase is the introspection, the positive psychology. How do you figure out all of the purpose, the positioning internally, things, strengths, ah. weaknesses, things like that, all of the grit scores. How do you define success? Because that will just determine where you're heading, right? What, how you're building your business. The second part of the book is my brand matrix, which is the Venn diagram, basically, of the image, narrative, and the product and the service. And what we're trying to figure out is the brand pillars right in the middle. And, and I can, I usually use this example when I'm explaining the brand matrix. If I were to say to you, oh, there's this song in my head and I cannot figure it out because I've got to learn, I, I got to figure out who sings it. She's a powerhouse vocalist. It's just a really powerful voice. Who am I thinking about? Help me think. Ariana Grande or Kelly Clarkson? Could be, okay. It could be Whitney Houston. It could be right. Carrie Underwood. It could be right. a thousand different singers. And then I say, oh no, she's got like this mod qual quality. She's British. So you go to Adele. It's Adele. So my point is that you're trying to get a matrix of adjectives, terms, whatever those pillars are, that are group, that when grouped together, it sets this brand apart in the marketplace. Got it. So you can't have just powerhouse vocalists, although it's true to the brand, you have to have these other elements to it to make it cohesive, communicate correctly to the audience and competitive. And the other thing about this that I love so much is I think there is a an error that entrepreneurs are making that is stifling them, thinking that they have to compete with the number one person out there, right? If you're not Tony Robbins, oh, what's already done? If you're not Gary Vee, Grant Cardone, like whoever you want, Mel Robbins, like whoever you're following. However, if you dial in the type of thing you're talking about it becomes much easier to be in the top echelon yes. of that world. Yes, that's the whole point. And it's funny that you say that because I always say your competition is not the person next to you. It is the superstars that are already done it, right? So it's like when you're building your brand, you should be looking at that level to level yourself up naturally. As, as a muse, not a... Right. Inspiration. No, yes, 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 I get it. Yes. But it, but what I, but you, if you're not looking at that level, then you may not build your brand competitively enough to compete with that level. Yeah. But that's interesting. So yeah, I, I do think, so the brand pillars, and okay, so then that's the second part of the book and basically breaks down the narratives, breaks down what the image should incorporate and obviously product service, how to make that cohesive across the board. Because in my experience, entrepreneurs of all kinds mm -hmm. have spent their entire lives trying to figure out what their product and service are. And they are really good at that part. And they're not there on the narrative of the image. So when people come to me, usually the product and the service is pretty it's on dialed target. In, right? Yeah, it's dialed in. They've spent their entire, all their resources. Well, here's the thing. Money. It's the reason they start. Why wouldn't it be dialed in? It's the reason right. they started their business, right? It's right. the thing they love doing. A hundred percent. Of course it's good. Yeah. Exactly. And I would say 90% of the time people are coming to me because they have a narrative issue because Either they've worked with a branding agency before and all they've gotten is some colors and a nice website with a pretty picture on it, but it doesn't say anything that where's the shared values deep. If I can't see something that I'm going to value in a photo, then I may not connect in those nanoseconds that I need before I scroll on by or something that's going to intrigue me. Especially now you yeah. have like that fast. I call it the age of the narrative. And then the last part of the book is all about evolution, how to evolve, but also how to protect your personal life, your private, I call it your private narrative versus your public narrative. Because I've also seen a lot of detrimental business decisions made, short-sighted or not, but it- I, yeah, I don't, I, like it done, wrongly, done wrongly or incorrectly, I call it woe is me marketing, right? Like you, did, or- People want to learn from your scars, not see your wounds. Yeah. Yeah. 
<laughs> you gotta yeah. be so careful about all of that. So That's I got it. Like, how did this become your thing? How, why is this your world? Because when I left the label, I leave, leave corporate America and I'm working with independents and I'm working with more entrepreneurs, right? Because they're not coming into the corporate world. I, the first thing I realized is that creatives need to start le- looking at themselves as CEOs. They need, it's, right? It's the identity. These are not mutually exclusive identities. And the most successful people I ever worked with at the label were good marketing, branding, business people. Well, that look, going back, right. <laughs> looking at social media and everything, there's people who are famous because they're good at marketing. I don't know that right. they actually do anything. <laughs> well, that's true. They, or maybe they do now, but that's not how they do, literally just started because they were good at the narrative. Yeah, no, that's true. And they don't have people behind the scenes telling them what to do, even though that's what a lot of people think. They really can do it on their own because they really have that business mindset when they go into whatever they go into, right? They realize that they have a hundred people that depend on them being a good business, right? Exactly. Um, So that's the first thing I noticed. The second thing I noticed was that... (laughs) Across the board, nobody, this is creatives, non-creatives, everybody, nobody knows the difference between marketing and branding. And that drives me crazy. So I had to start letting people know there is a difference. (laughs) And like I said earlier, marketing is what you want to say for the next 20 days. Branding is what you want to say for the next 20 years. I love that. And it it lines so much with what I say, the difference between marketing and sales. Marketing is what you're doing to create awareness of the fact you have a business. Sales is what you, is a mutually agreed upon conversation. It's not throwing DM pages at me. Sales is a mutually agreed upon conversation that we are both there yeah. to decide if we want to exchange money for services. Oh, no, that's good. I like that. Yeah, that's it's, so true. And it, so it's like brand is 20 years, marketing is 20 days, sales is 20 minutes. <laughs> yeah, so true. I like that. That's good. Roll with it. Use it. <laughs> I'm going to make a video about that tomorrow. Okay. I love it. Clip it. <laughs> Seriously. So what, I'm going to just, let's do some personal stuff. Oh. <laughs> One of the things I absolutely love to do is shorten people's learning curves. Okay. I'm like, if we can do nothing except make it easier for you, <laughs> what's something that in your, especially coming out of such big business, right? Like big beyond corporate. I think the entertainment industry is bigger money than most corporate jobs could even oh. ever think about. Yeah. Okay. And it is, if you look at the money that's out there, I was at the record label and ever since Napster came out, there's not so much money. The no, my, my mother was a Napster felon. I don't, I never, it's, it, she didn't mean it. I just, she was old enough. She was young enough to learn how to do it and too old to understand what she was Did doing. Did the RIAA <laughs> sue her? Is she one of the ones they, they sued? But then, but then obviously iTunes decided this 99 cent song right. um, without discussing it with anybody in the, the entire industry. They changed the entire industry. Yeah. It. Um, so I, what are some of the things that I'm myself right now? Oh, please. That's okay. I made a reference this morning to Tom Petty's waiting is the hardest part song. <laughs> so I age myself constantly. What are some of the things you got wrong? as you were trying to create this business for yourself? For me. We, for you, where you can say, like, just don't do what I did and you'll be ahead of the game. I think I wish I would have spent more time setting up my back end before mm-hmm. signing on clients. And I'm still working on that. <laughs> I think that's that should be something that you're all, all, always working on is right. updating, improving, streamlining my thing is streamlining like I I should have streamlined a lot earlier but when there's you know I've been doing this for over a decade now on my own mm-hmm. um, God, that's crazy to say out loud <laughs> I just wow it really is like way over a decade I think that when you're just starting out you're so busy trying to get clients yeah. and trying to figure out your ideal client Mm-hmm. that you don't spend enough time. Like I heard something the other day that was, oh, what is it? Like 
20% of your time should be with clients and 80% of right. your time should be back in sales, doing all of that. And I always say it's 20% of your time with clients, 50% of your time with marketing and yeah. sales, growing your business. Yeah. Growing your business. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So that's one thing I tend to let my business side suffer because I want my clients to be a hundred percent satisfied and happy. So I give them all my time. <laughs> so <laughs> boundaries is also a good thing. Boundaries I wish is a good thing. <laughs> now, that, now that we've gotten into it. Yeah. And it, yeah. It's totally. It, How much time do you have? I can tell you all the things. <laughs> I always, it's one of the best compliments the, one of the compliments that just makes me laugh that I once received from a, a coach that was helping me. He's the best thing about you is you'll get out there and tell everything, everybody, everything you screwed up and yeah. say, oh, just don't do what I did. You'll be fine. The funniest thing about that is that my favorite book review to date was somebody, and I wish I knew who put it, but it was an Amazon review two years ago. And it was, she's like a, a trusted friend that is, that's got your back looking for all the pitfalls. And that's exactly like my book is conference conversational. It's like a lot like me. I'm just going to tell you how it is, but I'm also like going to. It's, it's underlying intention. I think that you get away with being brutally honest when the underlying intention is always to lift everybody up. I don't do, right. Very I'm not doing anybody any favors by blowing smoke up your skirt. And that's exactly what I used to do when I taught at colleges, at SMU or wherever. I would always, for instance, like to, I would break it down outside of the textbook and say, hey, you're going to see a contract like this. And these are the th warning signs, like red flag, <laughs> protect your business, keep your copyrights, like all of those kind of things. So I've always been that way. And going back to what you said about the back end of the business, I think one of the things I also see um, and I'm sure I've done it as well, is people tend to try to solve all business problems with marketing tactics. Oh, yeah. They think all they need is more clients and that'll solve it. Like, blah, blah. No, that'll actually just make it crumble faster. Yeah. yeah. It, it just shines. They need to have less time to deal with it. It's like sweeping it under the rug. No, you got to deal with it. Growing money at everything is certainly seldom the right answer. Yes. Sometimes yeah, that's another that's thing that I see with people that don't understand their brand as clearly as they should, or they're listening to other people on how to do their brand. Like for me, I bring my clients, I'm not a coach, but I bring my clients into the process so that they see mm -hmm. full transparency, how to do it themselves. They learn it so that they can do it themselves. They understand why things, why they are the way they are, how then that affects their business in every area, right? And then how to build their team base off of that too. It'll help them figure out who understands it. And going back to where you started on what brand and marketing is different, but and branding is not your logo. To me, your brand is in product delivery. It, your brand is in everything that you offer. So for example, Absolutely. if the outcome is a Three day, re if the product is a three day retreat and the outcome of that retreat is a business plan, blah, 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 whatever, there's a very big difference between doing that at like the four seasons and doing that in a Airbnb in Nashville at the top of a mountain. Like those are very different brands. Yes. And it's about the, the emotional reaction to that brand. That's right. what it is. It's the connection that person's going to have with it. Do they understand it? Do they like it? Do they connect with it? I actually just delivered a brand report to a client yesterday. And I was like, brand is, you need to immerse them. That's what it is. That, that you need to think about how this relates to sensory mm -hmm. smells, views, yeah. everything. So yeah, Brent, like what if walk into a store and you hear specific kind of music, you, you smell specific kind of smell. That's all you <laughs> made that's all on purpose <laughs> it's all on purpose and i as you're saying that the example that came to mind is if you walk down the vegas strip each hotel is a very, very clear different brand. yeah and you can feel it and smell it and hear it yeah and, and touch the, it well. the and second you, can, you walk in and exactly and you can see it in the people that are there yeah as well and that's that's the that's whole what you're looking for. Love yeah. it. So if people want to continue this conversation with you, what is the best way for them to get a hold of you? 
Okay, so I'm on all the socials at the Laura Bull. And then my website, obviously, like I said earlier, www.thebrandmgmt.com. And that's really the best place. Like I said, there's the brand checklist that anybody can download for free and just work through. On and what's own. the name of the book? The book is everywhere. It is from individual. I'll hold it up. From okay. individual to empire, a guide to building a authentic and powerful brand. That's still in airports. And as a hardcover, but it's also ebook, audiobook, and don't worry, I did not read the audiobook. <laughs> I I had an actual professional, do, so you don't have to listen to me talk for eight hours or however long it is. However long it took, but it's very it's very fun. It's a fun read. I know it's a nonfiction and it's a business and blah blah blah. And there there are exercises and action steps and Love all it. of that to work through at the right time in the right place. Um, but it is very, I have obviously pop culture references all over it. Chapter one is Beyonce. Chapter two is Oprah. Oh, love it. Swift, Reese Witherspoon, <laughs> Martha Stewart, Sheryl Sandberg. It's across the board, a fun Nice. Uh, entertaining read as well. Thank you for hanging out with me for a while today. I think this is, I, it's, it's heartbreaking for me, not just when I go through it, but to watch brilliant people with brilliant gifts, not be able to get and do and serve at the levels that they want. And this is the missing, this is one of the core things yeah. that is holding them back. I think it's just so important. So hundred percent. Yeah. So I'm here you. to make other people's dreams come true. That is my purpose. So love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Thank you so much. Awesome. Thanks for having me. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the ready yet podcast. I truly enjoy bringing these stories of success and inspiration to you. Please join us in our mission to empower entrepreneurs to be in charge of their businesses and in charge of their lives by sharing this with anyone you know who would benefit from our tactical and motivating advice, leaving us a review, and letting us know if there are any particular topics you would really appreciate hearing about. See you next time.